Hi everyone, thanks for, for joining the Griffith Gold Standard webinar. Um, I'm the project manager for the Griffith Research Hub and the two ANS projects, the ANS Gold Standard and the ANS Metadata Store project, and I'm also a data librarian. Hi, uh, my name is Arvind Solon and I'm a senior developer in, in research services and I've been working on the Gold Standard project plus some other ANS projects as well. Some technical problems with the slides there. Um, before we start, just some acknowledgements for this project. Um, the Gold Standard Project at Griffith had a steering committee, which was comprised of Joe Morris, who's the manager of key research services here, Malcolm Bolsky, who's the associate director of scholarly information and research at Griffith, Andrew White, the ANS client liaison officer, um, Julie McCulloch, who's the ANS metadata librarian, Stuart Hungerford, the ANS senior research analyst and Chris McCoons, who's a web infrastructure developer in enterprise information systems at Griffith, and Gerhard Weiss, who's a senior programmer at Griffith. Um, just a glossary of terms so you can understand uh, some of the things that we're talking about in this web webinar. So first of all, the Griffith Research Hub, which is a showcase of Griffith research with profile pages for researchers and their associated projects, groups, publications, and data collections. The hub was seeded with funding from ANS to develop a metadata store, and selected records in the hub are provided to Research Data Australia via the OAI PMH. We also have a data repository, which makes research data collections from Griffith accessible and searchable via a web interface, and selected re records in the repository are ingested by the hub and then provided to Research Data Australia. So if you're not familiar with the term metadata store, the ANS Metadata Stores program supports the development of institution-wide solutions for the discovery and reuse of research data collections. Um, we use Vivo software. Um, that's the software that underpins the Griffith Research Hub, and it was developed by Cornell University. MOAI is an open access platform for aggregating content from different sources and publishing it through the OAI PMH, and it's used at Griffith to provide the automated feed of records to Research Data Australia, and also RAD, which, has, which is our research administration database, and it's maintained by the Griffith Office for Research, and it contains information about researchers, grants, and publications. The ANS Cite My Data Service, which allows research organisations to assign DOIs to research data sets or collections using the Global DOI Consortium Data Site. The NLA Party Infrastructure, which is a completed ANS funded project at the NLA to develop a national party infrastructure to provide persistent identifiers for people and groups or parties. And Research Data Australia, which hopefully you're, familiar, you're all familiar with, Discovery Service for Australian Research Data Collections and their related parties, activities and services. And of course, the records are provided by contributing institutions using the RIPCS scheme. We adopted an open approach for this project in accordance with Anne's wishes to share the project experience and the lessons with the Anne's partner community. The code we have developed for minting DOIs and for providing records via MOAI will be made available on GitHub at the conclusion of the project. And we also maintained a project blog from around February onwards. Of the 11 posts, there have been almost 1,400 views in total. And while there are a few comments, some people have contacted us contacted us directly after reading the blog, and we found the blog very useful in summarising our thoughts and in engaging with the ANS partner community. So in this webinar today, we're going to cover a project overview, the strategy we utilised to develop the gold records, the manually cre manual creation of gold standard records using ANS online services, the creation of records via an automated feed to RDA, the information architecture and the technical challenges we faced in this project, a list of the gold standard records, the enriched record connections that we've made in these records, then the enriched record components, the lessons we've learned along the way, uh, the return on investment, and then we'll just do a quick summary and then there's time for questions at the end. So this, was, this project was initiated to address a problem. And the problem was that there are now over 40,000 records that describe data collections in Research Data Australia, plus their related party activity and service records. 
And these records vary considerably in metadata quality and in their interconnectivity. So the purpose of the project was to create high quality records that are richly described and connected and to publish these gold standard records to RDA where they can be seen as exemplars of best practice. The premise is that high quality records that are richly described and interconnected will enhance discoverability and reuse of the resources they represent. This is part of the ANS data connection strategy, which is to link data through shared entities and concepts and to exploit these linkages in the Research Data Australia discovery portal to create a rich mesh of inter interlinked information about research data collections. So QUT was the only other institution to undertake the GOLD project. And unlike other ANS projects, we were encouraged to have minimal communication with QUT about this project, because an outcome of the projects was to find different pathways to similar goals. QUT have completed their project, but we are still to complete the final records review process. Creating high quality information about research data collections requires the creation of quality metadata records. The words on this slide are taken from the US Geological Survey website. Under the topic heading of why scientists should embrace data documentation, they explain the benefits of data sharing and metadata creation. They summarise the value of metadata for scientists as one, allowing others to understand your data. A metadata record will contain valuable information about your data set, such as why it was created, how, when and where the data was gathered, if there are any gaps in the data, what quality checks the data went through, other sources that were used to create the data set and how it should be cited. This record allows the data to be reused for purposes that may not have been foreseen when it was collected and this, this allows the advancement of science to occur. Two, to avoid data duplication. Development of a data set is a time consuming and costly endeavour. By merely making metadata available and discoverable, these records allow scientists to determine what data already exists and avoid duplication of effort. Three, to share and access reliable information. Metadata records allow scientists to share reliable information with ease and find out how to access it. Four, to evaluate data. A metadata record allows a scientist to quickly determine if data set is appropriate for use in a project. Five, to reduce workload. Creating a metadata record requires some work up front. However, when a data call comes in for data that a scientist created years before, the metadata record will provide the details about that data that may otherwise have been long forgotten. Six, to make data transcend people and time. A metadata record allows the data to remain usable once the data developer has moved on to other projects. It ensures investment in the data by providing information that allows it to be used indefinitely. And lastly, institutional memory. Metadata creates institutional memory for organisations, allowing an organisation to have accessible knowledge of all the work it has produced. The Gold Standard Project was all about creating quality metadata and making connections. It follows that the better the quality of the metadata, the more useful the records are to data discovery and reuse. So the aims, project aims and objectives were to investigate the metadata quality and design of records that Griffith contributes to RDA, to investigate methods for improving connectivity within the records using ANS tools and services, to identify the characteristics of a gold standard record, to identify deficiencies in our records that would be addressed through the gold project, to identify ANS tools and services that could be used to create gold standard records, to develop and implement a strategy for creating gold standard records, and to share process for viewing with the ANS partner community and to document the project including providing feedback to ANS on their tools and services. In scope was a project plan, a sample of richly enhanced RIFCS collection records with related party and activity records that are manually added to Research Data Australia, a document describing the process related to enriching uh, records to enriching standard RDA metadata records to gold standard. Five to 12 richly enhanced uh, collection descriptions with related party and activity descriptions provided via automated methods to RDA. A presentation of the findings of the project at a public event or forum, progress reports and a final report. The time frame, this was a nine month project that began in late February and the current status is that we're still in progress. We have a formal extension to 30th of November, um, but we expect the rec 
this, that's two days' time. But we expect the records review process will continue beyond this date and we'll publish um, on the blog when the process has been completed and the records are in the RBA production service. So this project was entirely funded by ANS at 125000 but the project built on existing infrastructure and staff knowledge, which are not factored into this funding as we'll cover um, in detail during the course of this webinar. As with any project, there are a number of risks associated with the project, and these include loss of staff, the capacity of Griffith Systems to store gold standard metadata, the ability to integrate with ANS tools and services, and the ability to automate record updates from Griffith to RDA for the gold records. Project stakeholders include Griffith researchers, who are research data collection owners and contributors of record content, Griffith eResearch Services, who provided the project staff and the overall project management and implementation. Griffith ICTS staff, who provided assistance with the feed of records from Griffith to RDA. ANS, who funded the project, and ANS partners, who are current and potential implementers of processes and solutions, and some of whom are providers of ANS tools and services, such as DataCite and the National Library of Australia. All right, so a little bit about the strategy we utilized in the gold standard project. So firstly, it was to interpret the meaning of gold standard records, then build on existing records and their related party activity and service records, and expand the records to use as many rich CS elements as possible. Then make use of ANS tools and make connections with these records, uh, site my data, DOI minting service, and National Library of Australia party infrastructure. Then initial records are to provide provided via, um, via ANS online manual interface, and then later via automated feeds. Um, ANS staff will then assess the record quality and provide feedback prior to approval for publication in RDA. And finally, assess and share our gold standard experience with ANS and ANS partner community. So interpreting the gold standard. Our first task was to interpret what was meant by the gold standard records. Uh, we used a variety of documentation and research to find out, and these, in, these included uh, the ANS Content Providers Guide, or the CPG. This guide is a reference tool for metadata providers who needs to use the rich CS schema, and it describes the information collected for display in Research Data Australia and explains how to use the rich CS schema to share that information with ANS. We also used the rich CS schema guidelines these documents describe the use of the RITCS schema for the purposes of exposing collection, collections metadata via an OII PMH data provider to the RDA collection registry. And also, we used our friendly ANS liaison officer, Andrew White, who provided us with some briefing notes on what was expected regarding the creation of gold records. Next, um, we identified some ANS tools and, and services that we could use to create connections in the gold records. These were um, on, um, the National Library of Australia's party infrastructure. This is a service that allows institutions like Griffith to obtain a single, unique, persistent identifier for each of its researchers. All other identifiers, such as Scopus and Thompson IDs, can be grouped under the one NLA party ID. We will go into further detail about our experience with this infrastructure later in the presentation today. We also use the, um, the ANS site metadata service. Through this service, an uh, institution can mint digital object identifiers for their collections. The service is offered free of charge using the global organization site as the registration agency for the DOIs. Again, we will go into some further details about the experience with this infrastructure in the presentation today. Uh, also, the Australian Gazetteer service is about the establishment of a robust national infrastructure that allows place names to be validated efficiently by both individuals and software systems. Uh, however, it was unfortunately not yet available to, be, to use it uh, during the, our creation of the gold standard records. So, um, we created a spreadsheet to manage the record review process. Um, so, to note the deficiency in the collection records the, and the associated party service and activity records, and to identify improvements to make, to the, uh, to make the records gold standard, and to reference ANS content provider guide and the RIF. The findings of this process was mostly gaps in the records rather than the poor, rather than poor descriptive metadata. And we will talk about the specific gaps and how we fill them shortly in the slides about record enrichment and connections. So the manually created records in RDA. This was required to meet deliverable B2 
So we were required to uh, enhance one collection record to gold standard, plus their associated party activity and service records. Submit this uh, via ANS online services, then go through the review process with ANS staff, and after review, we can publish it with the RDA. And our assessment of uh, the steps one perform here is um, value of the manual submission uh, is useful if you if you don't already have an automated feed of records to RDA, and it's useful if you can store the type of information required by RDA in your own systems. Um, it gets you familiar with RIFCS, and you can see errors and shortcomings immediately. Some drawbacks is that it doesn't require you to store the rich metadata about collection in your own systems. Uh, and if you do have an automated feed, you risk to have mismatched metadata between institution and, and RDA. So about the automated provision of records to RDA, this is required to meet deliverable D4. So we were to enhance five to 12 collection records to gold standard level, plus their associated party activity and service record. And then submit this via an automated feed to RDA. Then go through the review process with the AND staff this is the stage we're currently at. And when the review is finished, this will be published to the RDA. Um, and our assessment of these steps are that our approach to the automated feed allowed us to enhance the metadata capacity for connections within our own systems and to maintain richer metadata than RIFCS required within our data repository. An example is item level records. Um, keep the records we provide to RDA in sync with our records in our in internal systems. Drawbacks, um, it's definitely more time consuming to do this uh, than the manual submission. Uh, and it relies on the ability to, to enhance capacity um, of technical and metadata of the source systems. Uh, and it requires mapping from, from RDF to RIPCS. Requires liaison with our ICTS staff. So that's an extra step in the process for us. And a little bit more cumbersome to review in within the ANS online services. So, so to understand how we crafted the automatic feed of our records to RDA, it uh, will be helpful to look at the technical architecture or the information architecture here at Griffith. So this diagram shows the information um, about the flow in and out flow uh, of the research hub. Uh, so basically, rich RDF data is stored in the hub uh, and that RDF data that is then queried using MOI to produce the RIFCS feed, which we um, which we harvest in, into RDA. Uh, and whenever possible, we make changes to the records in the source systems, for example, the data repository or in the research hub itself, and then updated the mapping within MOI to reflect those changes in the RIFCS feed. So some technical challenges. Uh, the RDF to the RIPCS mapping, and there were also some additions to the RDF ontology to accommodate gold standard metadata levels. And then for us, it was also about coordinating the record feed to RDA with Griffith ICTS. So we were relying on assistance from ICTS when they were releasing a new MOI version, and we had no di direct access to test and production systems, which were used um, to upload our records via the automated feed into ANS test environment for review. Um, also, we have problems when we try to load the Library of Congress subject headings as an ontology into Vivo, because we wanted to use this um, as an easy way to extend, uh, to describe the research areas in um, for the records. Um, we tried to load the whole ontology into Vivo, but the size of the ontology XML file, which was about 900 megabytes, actually caused uh, our entire Vivo dev instance to crash without a chance to restore. So the database, database was completely wiped. So any Vivo users, beware. Please handle large ontology files with care, because <laughs> it just really doesn't like it. Um, also, being early implementers of the DOI service, um, we encountered a few problems. So the documentation was not up to date, and uh, in the beginning, the test environment was simply not working. Uh, we had to use the production environment for testing, and that was not a good solution, uh, as when we wanted to conclude the testing and get a proper production prefix DOIs, we had to get and service staff to manually flip the switch, and then we were basically left without the testing environment as the production environment would only produce production DRIs. Um, also, 
being early implementers of the citation element in RITCS, we'll address this issue a little bit later in the presentation. So um, please note that we have not yet concluded the project, and the record is still in the review process. Uh, and we will put up a blog post when the review process has been completed, and the records are available in the RDA production service. But on this slide, you can see the list of collection records being updated to gold standard and all their party, associated party activity and service records. OK, so we use the and Site My Data service to mint a DOI for our collection records. Ave developed PHP script to do this, which we will make available open source by the end of the project. And in the meantime, it's available on request. We saw the value of the DOI minting service as something beyond the gold project. And there's a list of what we think the value of DOIs are. Um, the benefits of using the AND Site My Data DOI minting service is that it facilitates all of the values um, that are listed in that slide of DOIs. It's free and unlimited within reason, of course. It mints through DataSign, which is a global DOI registration agency for research data, site, data sets. You get technical support from and staff, and it's technically straightforward now, I say, because Abe has described some of the problems that we had initially, but they have mostly been resolved as far as we are aware. So Griffith University was an early implementer of the party infrastructure project at the National Library of Australia. And as such, we contributed a feed of party records directly to the NLA to obtain NLA party identifiers prior to the completion of that project. This means that we had assistance from NLA project staff to match the 20 records we needed party identifiers for and that had failed automatically ma automatic matching. Additionally, our unmatched records remained accessible for us to hand match as required. So for the gold project, we simply logged into the Trove Identities Manager, which is displayed on the slide, or also known as TIM. We selected the Griffith unmatched records and either matched or created new party records in the NLA party infrastructure. It takes less than 10 seconds to physically match the records in TIM. However, it takes more time to determine whether a match should be made in the first place. The process for this is to take your unmatched record and search for possible matches in the infrastructure, that is, searching for matches among records that already have an NLA party identifier assigned to them. This, this can be quick, for example, if there is clearly no existing record with the same surname and first name, or it can be more time consuming, for example, if there is an existing record with the same surname and an initial that matches the first initial of your unmatched record. There is some expertise required for this task to ensure that the right match is made and librarianship skills are most useful in this regard. For us, the process was quick and took approximately one to two minutes per record, times approximately 10 records was about 10 to 20 minutes. As mentioned, we already had the NLA party identifiers for a number of our records. We didn't require training in using TIM because this was done by me and I worked on the party infrastructure project prior to coming to Griffith. We took these identifiers and added them to the relevant party records in the Griffith Research Hub and the hub supports multiple identifiers for each researcher, and the NLA identifier is one of these. The NLA identifiers were mapped to RIFCS and provided in the automated feed of party records to RDA. So we made a number of enhancements to our gold collection records. So this included um, reviewing the collection title. We created a concise but specific title so that researchers can identify the topic in a nutshell and distinguish from similar titles. And we also reviewed the description um, that it assumed no prior specialist knowledge in plain language, minimal but de detail. We also mapped a format element, which refers to the file format of the data, which is like a PDF or CSV or, or similar. And this is stored in our data repository records into a repeated description element um, in, in RIPCS. Uh, review the, the, the review reviewing rights and access rights. These are the specific statements referring to the legal framework and access condition regarding the data. Uh, we added temper coverage. We included uh, a date range for the collection, and we'll cover this in more detail in the next slide, along with spatial coverage, which is ge geographical coordinates and text that is are applicable um, to where the data was collected. Uh, we went to the digital object identifier, DOI, for each collection record using the and Site My Data service, and we included citation information that includes the DOI 
so that the collection can be cited in publications. We included related information, uh, information that relates to the collection, such as a related website. And we included subject types in addition to field or research codes, uh, for example, Library of Congre Congress subject headings and local types. We included um, to provide additional context, sometimes more provided, uh, more, more precise than the OR codes, and to assist in the discoverability and implementation of the resource. So we added temporal and spatial information. And in some cases, this required consultation with a data custodian, which in many cases is the re researcher. But um, in other cases, this information was made clear in the collection description. For some collections, the temporal metadata included a start and end date. For, other, for others, new material was still being added to the collection, so there were only a start date added. Adding spatial information required the use of Google Earth so that we could supply both the human readable text and the actual coordinates. Google Earth includes a coordinate system that gives you the latitude and longitude of where your mouse is pointing. Um, the coordinates are used in RDA to give users both the actual coordinates and a visual location of the map. Um, so, enrich collection record components. Um, once the DOIs were issued for each of the for each collection, we create a citation element. In the manual interface, the addition of a citation element is, is easy once we had identified what information we want to include in it. However, the automated piece was more challenging. And support the provision of the citation info element as either a single block or provided separate parts. Because we use Vivo software and this is based on our RDF triple store, it was more logical for us to map from, a, from individual RDF elements to separate parts in RIPCS. However, we found that some of the mandatory parts seem to be ported directly from citation information for publications and not really adjusted to suit collection metadata. The absence of a guide or examples made it difficult to determine how the information required could be, should be constructed and how the, those ending citations would be rendered based on the individual citation parts. Um, as a number of ANS partners, in addition to Griffith, expressed, um, expressed similar concerns for using this very new RIPCS element. ANS has since, since updated the citation info element and based, based it on the community feedback. So we enhanced the party records by including an NLA party identifier by adding a biographical statement. So researchers are able to log into the research hub and edit their profile page to add a biographical statement. And this is then fed to RDA in a party record. We added ANZ SRC field and research codes, and these are also recorded in the hub and mapped to the RDI feed. We added related publications. So for related publications, we decided to script an insertion into each gold party record that contained a link to the publications listed in the researcher's profile page in the hub and a text note explaining this link. We felt this was preferable to adding each publication as an individual listing, as in some cases there were 100 publications and the most current publications list is in the hub record. The script is specific to Vivo users and references Griffith systems, but can be made available to other institutions on request. We were expected to include existence dates, which are birth or death dates, which would have uh, provided an additional context uh, for a party and also an additional match point for records provided to the NLA party infrastructure. But unfortunately, we couldn't include these in our party records because it's against Griffith for privacy policy. And we also reviewed contact details. For the activity records, these come from um, the Research Administration database, which is managed by the Office for Research. So we weren't able to change those records directly in RAD. However, we did enhance them within the hub itself, which was by adding temporal and spatial coverage wherever possible and by adding existing states. So lessons learned. The ANS online services tool to create manual records makes it possible to provide gold standard quality records to Research Data Australia, even when some of this information cannot be captured in your local systems. However, it's preferable to capture rich metadata in your own systems and then provide the records in an automated feed to RDA. Your choice of strategy to enhance records to gold standard is dependent on your method of submitting these records to RDA. So we recommend that you build in processes for record enhancement that are sustainable wherever possible, that is, captured in your own systems, so that they can be applied to as many records as possible and will have benefit to your institution beyond contribution of the records to RDA. To give an idea of the return on investment, 
the outgoing cost for this project, uh, the project funding was 125,000 and we had two staff members working on the project. But not all of our time was spent creating records. There was also time spent on administration, reporting, communication and so on. The costs that are not factored into this number are that we built on existing systems such as the research hub. We built on existing staff knowledge, so training was not required. We built on existing collections, such as those in the research data repository. The benefit is that we have rich metadata in our systems, which, are, which can be discovered locally and by Google and so on. We've created rich metadata records in Research Data Australia, which is again another platform for discovery of the collections. Also, more and more widgets and visualisation tools are being developed for specific areas. They require the metadata to, pre to, to present things like 3D flyovers using spatial data or visual and interactive timelines that use temporal data. The citation element and DOIs are an encouragement to researchers to cite data and to provide data so that it can be cited. And the NLA party identifiers are beneficial as a way of managing multiple identifiers for each researcher to improve researcher exposure through the creation of a trove record. So overall, we've created better metadata for long-term access, preservation, discovery and reuse. And just you, if you wanted to do the same thing, you could save some time by using the open source scripts that we've created and the QT have created. And to create, we recommend that you create rich descriptive metadata at the time a researcher hands over the data, hopefully, rather than going back retrospectively. So in summary, um, we suggest that the approach for enhancing records will differ widely between institutions as it's dependent on a number of factors, including the existing systems in place at the institution for managing research data, what metadata is captured in these systems, how the institution will feed their records to RDA, and if they're using an automated feed, whether changes need to be made in a single place in one system or in many places in many systems. It also depends on staff and researcher availability and on available funds. So that brings us to the end of the presentation and I hope you've got something out of it and time for questions. <laughs>